All right, so good morning, everyone. So this is the fresh morning, and I know and uh, some, some of you maybe have a really tired morning, and then maybe some of you just wake up, right? So with all the information you gained yesterday, and we prepare some fun activities for you before we get started. So it's time for you guys to have some exercise. This activity can let you guys stand up and wandering around in your house, all right? And the first game of ours is called the yeah, next slide. Thanks. It's called at home scavenge hunt. So I assume guys in your house right now, right? So this game, you can get ready by stand up and I will give you some items or I will give you some keywords. So I will only mention about the keywords of the item and you are going to find anything related to it. So anything can, no matter it's alive things, maybe your cat, maybe your dog, your puppies, that works too. Okay, so I hope you guys are ready and you can find items anywhere in your house, no matter it's in a kitchen or bathroom or your living room. Okay, so, but remember, we also have a countdown while we are doing this. So you only have around like 10 seconds to find the things and get back to the screen on time. If you guys ready, can you give me a powerful arm emoji? And let me see, could you guys give me a powerful arm emoji? And if you are ready, I'm going to press the counting right now. And good. Okay, Sophia, I see Esther. Good job, Christine. All right, so we are going to start it in three, two, one. So the first thing you are going to find in the next slide, the first thing you are going to find is something is white. Oh, okay. Let me check. Let me check. Oh, interesting. So, Akma, you have uh, Akma, what's that? My vitamin. <laughs> oh, okay. So, Christopher, Christopher, what's that? Looks interesting. Uh, one moment. It's a sanitizer gun. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I wish I have this. I really like wish I had this. Okay, now let me see. What's, what else? Oh, a lot of people have tissues, have hairbrush. Wow, interesting. Okay, so now we can get ready for the next one. Are you guys ready? So I'm going to press the countdown again. And this time, it's a little bit difficult to find. Okay, so you are going to find something is soft. Get ready for the Okay, time stop. I have my panda over here. I put it over here, it's white and it's soft. Let me see what else you guys have. Okay, Tumba? Tumba, what's that? A pillow. Oh, wow, cool pillow. Okay, and uh, let me see. Uh, Florida, what you got? That's the very small blanket that I use when I'm cold at night. Mm. Oh, cute. Okay, so interesting. All of you have done a really good job. So the last thing, the last thing you remember, this thing is the hardest one. Okay, so let's get it started. You are going to find something you can see yourself in it. Four, three, two, one, zero. Okay, time stop and let me see. Okay, this one is not that easy, right? So I see a lot of you have the phones. Yeah, because we can see ourselves from the phones. And uh, let me see, is there any other phones? Mm. Anyone I think everyone you have the yeah, mirrors? Phone. Yeah, phone is the really easy way. I, I'm holding right? my graduation picture. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. 
Okay, so wow, Cliff, you have the pictures. Smart guy. I mean, smart. Hey, fish, fish, fish. What's that? Yes, that is like this family picture. I wow, can't... family picture. <laughs> oh, I like this. You have the family picture. Okay, so now you are holding the things you can see yourself in here, right? Uh, yeah, next slide, thanks. So maybe you have your phones and maybe some of you have the mirrors over here, right? Because I have my mirrors too. I put them over here. So when you're holding the things that you can see yourself in it. So uh, before we get started for the next activity, I want you guys to look yourself into the mirror or into the things that you can see yourself in it. And have you ever watched yourself? Think about this. Have you ever watched yourself in the mirror or in the phones or maybe water because sometimes water can reflect your, right? So, and then think about that you only success. Like a lot of people give you a compliment, but you only think that, okay, I'm success because, because of luck. Or have you ever feel that it is difficult to accept a compliment from your teacher, from your parents, or from your maybe families? And have you ever looked in the mirror and think that, hey, I don't deserve the crowns or tiaras that I have on my head these days. People compliments because that I just get lucky, not because the hard work that I putting into it. All right, so I know you guys have a lot of things that you want to share before we get deeper into it. And let's take part to the next activity. It is the musical guessing game. So I will play the tune and intro the song and I will know you guys. I know you guys love the music, right? Tumba, Christopher, Sophia. So let's see who's the top six can name the song. Why I put a six here? Because six is a really lucky number in China. Okay, so okay. The first one is a very, very easy one. I'm pretty sure like everyone has heard this before. And a majority of us, like Martha liked the singer of the song. So you can open your mic or you can type in the chat to tell me what song is it. All right, so we are going to start in three, two, one. Baby. Baby. <laughs> Justin Bieber. Lawrence, wow. Baby. Yeah, that's fast. I'm going too fast. I can sing with this. I can sing with this. Yes. So, baby, good job. So, Sophia, Marcera, Lawrence, wow, you guys really fast. And uh, Huiling, yes. Fans, I think, yes. So, a lot of it, Justin Bieber fans, all right? And now we can move into the next one. So before we get to the next one, I can share a little tips to you guys. Is that this singer, we always call him the king of the industry. And this is the huge hit song. Maybe next year. And now we can get started in three, two, get ready guys. You can use your mic and you can type in the chat. So three, two, one. Wow. <laughs> Shape of you. All right. Oh my God, you guys are really so. Is that Harry oh, Styles? Oh, what did yeah. what did you say, Sophie? Uh, it's Friday, Kira. I think. Ah, okay. Shape of you. Do you count if I know the song but I don't know the name? Does that count? Yeah, sometimes, sometimes it happens to me too. I even can sing with some, but I forgot the name. <laughs> like, I okay. even know the lyrics, but I don't recall the name of the song. Okay, so good. And the last one is what we think, for what I think the most difficult one. So I'm going to give you a huge tip to you guys. So it is a BGM. It's a soundtrack from the game. And the team number two, the majority of the class had played the game before. Okay. So now let's listen together and listen carefully. Among Among us. Us. Wow. <laughs> I thought this one going to be a very difficult one, but you guys get it so quickly. Yeah, among us, right? So have you, um, could you put your hands up or give me a hands up emoji if you have played this game before? Yes. Thank you, uh, Akma, Ewan, Fish, Sophia, Christine. We used to, your, we used to play together. Like, uh, yes, because we, uh, we AQ and the class. class. Yeah. 
like the first second last semester. year we will all play this together like yeah. very late at night nine at night nine at night <laughs> yeah okay so among for the people who haven't played this game before uh let me tell you something so among us is like a teamwork game that there's an imposter inside who need to hide from others and do bad things so since we are talking about this can you can someone give me a ghost emoji if you had seen as uh as been imposter before I have been imposter before. So I will send a ghost emoji by myself. Good, Esther. Yes, all right, let me ask you something. So if you are the imposter, what's the thing you are afraid of? So Esther, if you are the imposter, what's the things you are afraid of? Uh, they find me is an imposter. Yes. Sophia, yes, Sophia, being exposed, being caught. All right, so which is leading to our topic of day? Sometimes that have you ever stand in a crowd that you fear that others will find you or others will notice you. You don't want people pay attention to you. So ta-da, the topic of the day, the imposter syndrome. Okay, Vili, you can have the stage is all yours. You can have from here. And she will talk more about this. All right. Hello, guys. Can you hear me? So I believe that you all can see the whiteboard. So, okay, just ignore the whiteboard first. So just as Wan Chuan said that today our topic is imposter syndrome. Okay, so what actually imposter syndrome are? Like, do you guys really understand or know or even heard about it before? Okay, let me explain it in a very simple way. So imposter syndrome is like, have you any have any of you ever felt like you do not belong in like where you are or what are you working right now? Or you don't feel like you are never good enough? If you ever felt that you could have imposter syndrome. So imposter syndrome is like it's defined as doubting your own abilities and feeling like a fraud. And mostly it, it happens in like people who they always expect high, but find it like very hard to accept their own accomplishment. And imposter syndrome might lead to high level of stress and anxiety. I believe that we do have like times being unconfident, which doubt our own ability and decisions. And now I want to make a, I want, I want all of you to like join my very small activity. Now you see the you see the whiteboard. So whatever I say just uh, later, if you feel like if you feel like you have it, draw a sad face, a frown face on the whiteboard. But if you don't have it, you don't feel like it, you never felt that before, you draw a smiley face on the whiteboard. So later I hope to see the whiteboard getting filled with faces. Okay. What I'm going to say is the common signs having imposter syndrome. So I'm so open up your ears and I'm, I'm going to start now. So first, you always attribute your success to external factors. Second, you blame your own performances. You always feel like you're not, never satisfied with your own performances. Third, you are always afraid that you do not live up to expectations, like regardless people's expectations on you or your own expectations on yourself. Fourth, you are an overachiever, which you never feel like satisfied with your own accomplishment and you always strive to accomplish more and more. Fifth, you sabotage your own success by searching for external sources to blame for the failure instead of like thinking of your own mistakes. Six, which you don't believe in your own ability, you self-doubt yourself. Am I too fast? Hold on, now, really. I think they, they are not sure how to, how to edit oh. the whiteboard. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So we, so you guys know how to edit it now? Yeah, you guys can click on the view options, the button there, and then you click the annotate. Yeah. Yeah, so if you if whatever I said just now you feel like you have this kind of feeling, you can just draw a very big sad face. <laughs> okay, 
Now I'm going to say the last one. Last, you always set your goal very high and challenging and you will feel disappointed whenever you fail to achieve whatever you hope for. Wow, I see all the sad faces popping out at the whiteboard. So if any of you had this sign, don't worry as whenever there's a problem, there's a solution. So let's continue to figure out what type of imposter syndrome you are. And thanks for all the sad faces. <laughs> okay, guys. So let's take a look at do you have imposter syndrome or what kind of imposter syndrome you are. Now you are, uh, uh, can you guys follow the slides on the screen? And which is bigger for you guys that you can let me see where's the slides then you guys can follow the screen or we were going to send a pdf format in a group chat which is very easy for you guys to see okay you will have two minutes to do this test and you will find but we haven't tell you the result yet because we want to keep it by myself and then we will share with you later on so please remember what kind of a color you are or what a kind of the heart is, what a kind of color the heart is. So we have two minutes to finish the test. Then you guys can share your color of the heart in the chat box. Shall okay, I if you now or do I wait? Yes. Put it Sorry. in the chat. Yes. So when you get your resort, you can put your resort on the chat. Yes. So Yuhan is green, Florida is green. And I can share with you guys, I'm pink. I'm the little pink one. So Yash is blue, Kevin purple, Akuma purple. Fish blue, wow. Okay, Sally blue. Alicia purple. Sophia yellow. Shinje blue. Okay, interesting. Wow, interesting. Okay, so I assume that a majority of you have your result yet. Okay, so really. Okay, so I believe that all of you have tests and do remember your color as I'm going to explain every type of imposter syndrome. So according to Dr. Valerie Yang, imposter syndrome can be categorized into five types, which are the experts, the soloists, the perfectionists, the superman or superwoman, or the natural genius. Of course, if you are the sixth type of person like Wan Chen, who does, have, does not have imposter syndrome, I'm here to congrats you. And now I'll explain briefly what does it mean for each imposter syndrome. Let's start. So first, if you have been categorized as the expert, means you have the so green, uh, you have the blue heart, means that you usually will expect that you know you expect to know everything but you when you don't you feel like ashamed the experts type usually they think that if they do not know enough they will be judged as inexperienced or unknowledgeable so if you are experts here you can wave your hand okay let's go to the next 
So listen carefully. I see some. I, I see some of the people are the next one. So second, I will be talking about soloists. So I see Lawrence. I see who? Sophia, I guess. Are soloists. So the soloists. So whoever you are, the soloist, you, your your result shows that uh, you believe the work must be accomplished alone, and you refuse to take the credit if anyone gives you any kind of help. Usually, this type of person they suffer asking for help, and I, for me myself, I'm actually one of the soloists here, after doing the test, and I have this kind of problem as well that it's uh really hard for me to ask for help. But I really wanted to tell all the soloists here that it is good to be independent, but do not do until the extent that like you reject every help to just to prove your worth. Next third. The natural genius. So if you are the natural genius, your heart will be red in color. And any genius here, you can wave your hand as well. So for this type of person, you tell yourself that everything must be handled with ease. If not, it's not so-called natural talent. And put it in a simple way. Those uh, who categorize as natural talent, they will always think that if they took longer time than usual to master something they want to, they feel ashamed because they took too long. It is actually quite similar to the perfectionist, but a natural genius type usually does not judge themselves based on ridiculous expectations. They aim themselves to accomplish something fast and fluently. Fourth, the superman or the superwoman. If you are the, if you are the so-called heroes, you get the green heart. So, for this type of person, you'll always feel that, oh, you should be able to excel every role you take on in everything, in everything in your life. So, for this type of person, you'll often like push yourself very, very hard just to measure up. But, however, this is actually just a like false cover up, cover up for insecurities. So, I, I believe that like, I just I saw many purple hearts here. So I believe that uh, many of us have this kind of feeling of our ex experience also. When you're doing something, you always push yourself very, very hard. And last but not least, the perfectionist, the purple heart. So I see quite a lot there as well. And dear perfectionist, you are most likely to set your, your goal or your standard like very high and you... The target is for yourself and you set it like very challenging and high most of the time. But when you're unable to achieve what you were expecting, you beat yourself up. But what I mean by beating yourself up doesn't mean that you really go and punch your face or something. It means that you, you keep on blaming yourself for not doing good enough to achieve what you really hope for. So for me, I always have this kind of feeling, especially when I have my dance practice. I always hope that and expect myself to be like a professional. Level. But when I can't even do a very simple move, I feel depressed. And of course, I keep on blaming myself for like being a dumb. I don't know. But in a nutshell, like regardless which types of imposter syndrome we are, we are all human beings and all human beings are imperfect. No one is perfect. But it, it's okay to fail sometimes. And it's okay to like you, you feel down sometimes, especially when you don't achieve what you want. It's okay to be down. It's okay to be sad. But I hope that all of us here can understand that failure is the power. It's the power that makes you grow, which makes you become a better person, stronger. Like I said just now, if there's a problem, there's always be a solution. And now... In terms of solution, I would like to pass the stage to Yi Heng and Felice. Okay, all right. Okay, so speaking about, let me share the whiteboard. Okay, so speaking about imposter syndrome, right? Uh, it's not just us who experience it. Actually, all these successful leaders, every entrepreneur, every artist, basically everyone who powered something for the first time, there's imposter in that moment. Okay, so the difference is how they chose to live with it, and we call it the imposter two step. Okay, let me tie that. Imposter two step. Okay, so I'm going to share with you uh, how do we overcome it when um, there is an imposter. 
Okay, so the first step is, okay, let me draw. Okay, so this is you, right? This is you. And this is the imposter. Okay, this is the imposter. <laughs> okay, so the first step is asking when there's an imposter, okay, in you, asking yourself, the first step is asking yourself what is my imposter is saying to me, okay? You have to give it a voice. What is your imposter trying to say to you, okay? And then the second step is once you receive what your imposter is trying to say to you, okay? Now you have to ask, what am I going to say back to my imposter? Okay, this time uh, you're giving yourself a voice. What am I going to say back? Okay, let me give you an example. Okay, if you were thinking about applying for an internship like now, right, you are looking for internship, your imposter might say something to you like, um, well, you don't quite fit all the 10 requirements in the brief there. Okay, yeah, that's what I experienced. Okay, and it's feel really bad because um, it's, it's really sad, right? Okay, and so what you can do right now is you answer back to your imposter syndrome Okay, imposter, not imposter syndrome. Okay, but I do fit nine of nine of them. Okay, nine of the requirements there. So what's what's the worst that can happen? Okay, so make sure you listen to your imposter and you say something back. And uh, another example. Okay, when I was growing up, uh, my imposter said to me. I think a lot of us experienced before. Okay, um, your imposter said to you, you have no idea how to be successful. You are not cool and you are not smart enough. So. At that time, I can say back, well, but I don't really have a choice, right? So I'm going to grow anyway. So why don't we just follow the step? Okay. So this imposter tool step, it requires a growth mindset and also requires us to seek for a change. And what's, what's great is you already know how to do this two step. You know why? Okay. Because we all have done it before. See, when you learn to start for the first time, you are an imposter. Okay, because you did the two step and you figure it out and you literally um, did the two step by just walking. All right. So if you are applying for your first ever job, of course, you're an imposter because you don't have any experience. And all these experiences and all these situations are what have created the person you are today. Okay, so now we know we can reframe imposter syndrome uh, from another perspective. So Ihen will share more on the other side of perspective of imposter syndrome. Yeah. All right, so okay. let us move on to the next section. All right, so after all the tests and the result or, you know, the, the story that you, you guys have to share just now, let me just do a quick check here. Okay, let me know in the chat here. Um, I will give a, a, a two, two emoji here. Just let me know how do you feel about imposter syndrome? Uh, you, you can just put a thumbs up or thumbs down or a happy face or like a sad face. Just let me know because, you know, maybe some of us will, 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 will be like they, they are suffering from imposter syndrome. They don't think it is really comfortable to have this. So you can let me know in the chat. Is it a good or is it a bad to you? Okay, we have, I have seen, uh, I can see different emoji there. Okay, there are some of them. Okay, Miss Cheryl look, looks excited. Okay, Okay, some of us say not good. Okay, all right. Okay, I can see, so I can tell that most people's percep uh, perception of imposter syndrome is mostly negative, like they see imposter syndrome as something that is harmful to our success. And uh, it is like an, an additional layer of pressure on top of what we are doing. Uh. So what if, what if I say imposter syndrome is actually a good thing? Would you all believe that? Okay, it is not entirely a bad thing at all. Okay, it can be a, 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 a good thing. Do you know why? Okay, let me tell you uh, the three why here. Okay, I have three reasons here. The first one, okay, if you are having imposter syndrome, congratulations, you are actually growing because I see imposter syndrome as something like a growing pain. Okay, there's a typo there, sorry. Okay, as a growing pain and a growing pain, we can't avoid that. But after the growing pain, for example, like puberty, you will grow stronger and better. All right, so I would say that when you have imposter syndrome, you are actually pushing yourself outside of the comfort zone, like what they say. You are challenging yourself. You are challenging uh, your, yourself to, to know what you don't know and what you know and what you should learn more to be better. Let's just say better, like, not to be the best. Like, because when you say, I want to be the best every time, it, it sounds like professionist, which is not entirely a good thing like we have mentioned just now. 
and it is a sign of growing. So that is why it is a good thing. And the next thing I would say is why it is a good thing is new opportunities. When there is imposter syndrome, there are actually new opportunities. Why would I say so? Because normally when you are, have that feeling, you are actually experiencing something new. For example, like let's say just now Felix has mentioned a uh, job offer or job opportunity. When you have that opportunity, you will feel like, oh, do I really deserve, uh, deserve that opportunity? And at that time, you will feel like a uh, self-doubt or and, and, and all that. So at that time, you are experiencing or you are actually facing new opportunity. So instead of escaping uh, that feeling, you can you should actually embrace that feeling and let yourself know that is actually a new opportunity and I should be grateful for that. And the last why I would say, which is my favorite why, which is uh, imposter syndrome will keep us humble because um, I can tell that um, you probably wouldn't actually show yourself or show off yourself when you know that you uh, have a lot more to learn. So in this case, it keeps you humble. And um, there is a quote that I, I, I like from Eric Totter. It's actually, uh, the more you know, the more you know you don't know. And this is quite confusing, but when you, when you read carefully, you will know what it means. It is like, the more you know, for example, like uh, I know more in this field or this topic or in this area, I know that there's a ch actually a lot more for me to learn. So if you realize this, uh, this statement, when, when, you, when you understand this, you will know that actually successful people, they don't actually show off themselves too much. They will let their achievements speak for themselves. But some people, you know, they, when they, maybe there will be a group of people, they, they uh, will claim they know more or they know everything, but they're actually not. So I would say that this is a good thing about imposter syndrome. It keeps us humble at all time. And here's the thing, keeping ourselves humble is actually good, but actually try not to be too humble. All right, because that would actually uh, prevent ourselves from uh, presenting ourselves to others, like we don't have much confidence. So I would say that instead of saying that imposter syndrome is something that holds us back, holds us back I would say it is something that pushes us forward. Instead of being a source of um, stress, I would say it is a source of motivation, right? So I can say that this is how we change our mindset to actually uh, change how we view this imposter syndrome. I believe most of us here can relate to, right? Police, what, what, do you, what, what do you think about this, you know, mindset changing kind of perspective? Yeah, okay. So, um, guys, that's all about uh, the imposter syndrome. And before we end our session, I just want to mention something like, okay, I think um, all of us here must know that if something is, hard at first or maybe difficult it does not mean that you don't belong so learn on how to communicate with your imposter and um i believe you all will be there one day okay so that's all from our team and i hope you learned something from our session today thank you very much okay <laughs> open thank my you. mic thank you uh, when you see and hear me thank you very much you guys um um, it is, this, this workshop was really, really good. It was very uh, interactive, and I think it was also very educational too. Your insights are amazing. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you, you guys. Thank you, Farida. Thank you, everyone.